Hello, this is Addressing Diversity in Data Through the Work of Graduate Specialists. It is an online version of a talk that I'm delivering live, but virtually, at the 2022 ISIST Annual Conference in Gothenburg, Sweden. And that's a hybrid conference. Some people are there in person. I'll be presenting virtually. Um, and this is the uh, slides from that presentation. I am Ryan Womack. I am the data librarian at Rutgers University Libraries. I'm part of the New Brunswick Libraries uh, in the Rutgers system. So let's jump right in. My intention is to make a quick uh, video here that is going to run through an, a quick outline of what we're about, but not make it too long. So very quick outline. We're going to do the background, how we got to this place through a history of the graduate specialist program, talk a little bit about diversity in data, how we addressed this issue, what we found, what were the challenges, where we'd like to go in the future, how this connects to data literacy. And then finally, I'm going to throw out some discussion questions. If you have ideas that you'd like to, to put in the comments below, that would be great. Um, otherwise, this is a, a asynchronous version, so a little bit difficult to have discussion. So I'm talking about the Graduate Specialist Program. There's more detail on that in a presentation I gave last year at iAssist that's called From Pilot to Jetstream, Building Training Pathways and Collaboration in Data Science and Digital Humanities Through the Library. Uh, you can find short, medium, and long versions of that talk um, that describes several years' worth of work. So um, I did uh, end up elaborating uh, on things in one, ver one or two versions of that. Uh, but what is the Graduate Specialist Program? We developed a program to hire graduate students uh, with expertise in areas that we weren't able to fully cover through the libraries. Uh, a lot of those data skills, other research methods as well, that resulted in workshops and consultations to assist with things like Python and R and, and Vivo and Tableau and DH. Um, and the program was also designed as a developmental opportunity for the graduate students themselves. They were free to work on topics of interest, develop um, their own strengths in a teaching and helping context to have something um, that would reflect favorably on their resumes and in future job applications. Um, this enabled us to really uh, adapt very quickly in the COVID Zoom era, uh, having a core of students who were already providing these types of workshops. Uh, throughout that program, we were very focused on skills rather than larger themes. There were there was a little bit of that uh, along the way, but not very much. And so we don't have to go into all of the recent history that has led to an awakening and sensi sensitization to uh, racial equity, divers diversity issues on a much larger scale than I think previously. And that raised this issue for us as data people uh, to find a way to interrogate data issues from a diversity angle or lens. Uh, I just want to point out that this aspect of the program uh, does fit with our library's strategic plan. Uh, I would argue that it's uh, interwoven with all of the themes that we had identified in our previous development of the strategic plan in terms of um, student success, strengthening research, building connections as goals, and these themes that you see. However, in our previous strategic plan, which was developed in 2019-2020, uh, those elements were not foregrounded. But I believe that in future iterations of our strategic plan, we will see uh, DEI issues foregrounded in a different way. And I think this prepares us for that. OK, so we're still kind of giving the background on the graduate specialists in the slides here. 
Uh, I've mentioned the first two bullets already. Um, we do analyze this program every year to see what kinds of demands are there now, uh, what new topics might we want to cover, can we hire someone in a different area. And that was when the discussion of last summer uh, led to this decision to allocate some of the funding to diversity. So I think we can definitely uh, agree that not that there hasn't been any attention to that, but but a, the data world uh, has had issues with with collecting sufficient data, with representing underrepresented groups in the data, with making data uh, useful and relevant to various groups across society. Um, you can look at healthcare studies, you know, that have not represented women sufficiently to even discover. Uh, the issues that they might face in in certain health conditions, um, ethnicity, race, all all these things tied together there. And now we have, you know, sort of this different angle coming from the technological aspect of the data world where uh, we are designing artificial intelligence systems and algorithms um, to analyze data that's beyond a human scale, but there is a lot of argument that these methods themselves reproduce inequality uh, in a less immediately apparent way uh, that needs to be interrogated and examined uh, to understand its impacts. So if we take a narrow approach to data literacy of just pointing people at data sources, uh, looking up things uh, in response to their queries, teaching them methods in isolation from any sort of data ethics and um, social issues surrounding data, I would argue that that is um, a data literacy program that's, that's missing some key pieces. Um, and the effort to start to do something about that um, is reflected in this design of the uh, what we chose the name diversity in data uh, as as our theme. We we allocated positions for diversity in data science graduate specialists, uh, maintaining the data science in the title because data science is um, now the most readily understandable um, and most um, immediately popular keyword uh, to tap into the kind of people who have data skills of interest. Um, so our ordinary data, data uh, graduate specialist program uh, sets up people for 10 hour a week positions. Um, we felt that we wanted more diversity among our diversity in data science people. Uh, so we decided to split a position into two five hour per week positions. Um, the idea being that we wouldn't want to, we, we didn't need to see them cranking out, um, you know, workshop after workshop, but to empower them to investigate their own areas of interest and, you know, just come back with interesting findings. Um, and our job ad, we sort of gave a tip of the hat to the fact that we were looking for something beyond um, a, a cut and dried approach to these issues by referencing some of you know the recent work that is really um, taking a more activist stance uh, on these issues <clears throat> and forcefully pointing out flaws uh, in our current system. So like the um, data capitalism an algorithmic racism book uh, by Milner and Traub, Invisible Women, Race After Technology. Um, and interestingly, the applicant interest in this was off the charts compared to our previous rounds of hiring people. In the past, we had seen 10 to 12 applicants perhaps for the data science roles. We had I believe about 35 applicants for this. However, there was a huge number from computer science 
um, many of whom did not really latch on to the diversity part of the um, description, and they may have simply been seeing something that said data science algorithms and uh, jumped on that. Uh, but we did find excellent uh, candidates. And I mentioned we, we budgeted for two positions. We actually had someone who was interested in both the diversity role and another graduate specialist role that we were hiring for. We decided to split that position, that was the qualitative data position as well, uh, into half diversity, half qualitative data. So we ended up with three uh, graduate specialists across the disciplines, computer science, political science, sociology, um, PhD, or master's students in all those areas, who each of whom took a very different approach to the topic. And I think it kind of embodied that, um, that there's a lot of interesting things to work on here uh, that, that we, we can do. So what did they end up presenting on? So these are some of the topics. Uh, COVID, uh, in terms of its um, interaction with historical health care issues uh, around racial issues. So are Blacks uh, hesitant to take the vaccine in light of past uh, health disparities and um, problematic applications of, uh, of health health care. Um, a, a, another approach, which is a social media approach. So looking at uh, Twitter analysis to find patterns uh, connecting racial justice and pr police brutality. Um, that actually led to people being more interested in the methods once again, which I'll come back to in just a second. Uh, and our computer science student was very focused on algorithmic bias and developed a series on the different aspects of algorithmic bias and how it enters our technology, what we can, can do about it. Um, and so uh, the how of how this was done is these were all delivered as Zoom workshops um, workshops or talks or discussion, however you want to describe that. They did not have uh, as much, you know, sort of hands-on coding content as our methods workshops would. Um, we marketed them through our usual library methods, which is uh, working with our liaison librarians to send announcements out, uh, putting them up on our library calendar. Um, and there's a link here to um, the web page that is the center for that information. So you can um, consult that. You can see uh, some of the archived materials on algorithmic bias and racial bias in social media. Uh, so I mentioned here in the slides that there were some curveballs. So our um, one of our students, the one who had split her position, actually uh, only worked with us for one semester because she had demands uh, in the department uh, to go back and be a TA in sociology. Um, so we, we couldn't hang on to her for more than a semester. Uh, there were also some personal circumstances that led to um, another person not being available uh, for the, the much of the spring semester. So what we found was that it was, there was more potential, I believe, than what you see even among the topics that were, were developed. Uh, we just had some um, human setbacks uh, there, uh, but people were digging into really interesting uh, meaty topics, and we would like to continue that into the next year along the same themes, at least for this group of graduate specialists, for that reason, because we felt that um, people were uh, just getting started, in a sense, uh, on these large and complex topics. All right, so the slides here have, you know, some screenshots of what I've just shown you. Um, I've already started talking about the results a bit in what I'm describing. Uh, another challenge was that uh, we have seen actually across the board last year, um, the 
we had very high attendance rates for our online workshops. Uh, it seems that there is now a kind of Zoom fatigue or uh, things are challenging with many classes being back in person, but not all. Uh, and all of our online attendance has been down. When we have tried to offer in-person workshops, they have been almost not attended at all. So that is not an answer to this issue. But um, the diversity workshops had relatively light attendance. We had you know, three, four, five people for some of them. Uh, and those who came to things like the Twitter um, analysis were also still asking for more methods, like how do we uh, actually do, you know, give us some more examples of how we work with the social media data. When that was offered, the numbers went back up to 10, 15 people for that. So I think there is this interaction with um, continuing to provide the methods that we may want to think about um, by providing the methods uh, along with uh, content that is diversity focused. Uh, so I think that would be one way to uh, develop this. I think our marketing methods are uh, insufficient also for uh, the current environment that we find ourselves in. Uh, but those who came uh, found these sessions really valuable. There were meaningful discussions. It was a valuable experience for the students uh, who um, I believe got the graduate specialists got a lot out of it. Um, it provides a space for them to take on issues not covered in the classroom. You know, these things are really not covered in the curriculum very well. Um, however, it does require time for our um, to mentor and work work these students through the process. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. That was something that it was mostly on my part, although we had other other librarians involved in this program. Um, and I found it very rewarding, but it is uh, a bit time consuming to have several meetings, you know, meetings with three students each week uh, fills up a calendar um, quickly. OK, so to wrap things up, um, if we look towards the future, um, I think that one angle is that uh, having the students, the graduate specialists develop these things in relative isolation is also a bit difficult. Um, that as we engage in difficult topics that are uh, historically fraught, they are uh, involving uh, communities that have often been at the at the wrong end of a of, uh, power struggle. Uh, it would be better to have more dialogue, more discussion um, that would involve uh, affected groups, uh, minoritized populations and, and different things like that. Um, so we'd like to move towards something like that. Uh, we'd like to use the, the sort of talks around specific topics to seed further conversation so that the talk is an introduction uh, that leads to discussion groups that can just sort of free form uh, take on these issues. Uh, we would love to recruit graduate specialists from uh, a larger range of minority population populations or minoritized populations um, that in itself has its own difficulties um, similar to issues affecting librarian recruitment and things like that. Um, however, if we keep at this work, we can build up a corpus of material. We can build up resources that will allow us to go further and deeper into uh, into this work. Uh, and also, I mentioned the integration with methods to provide complete and balanced data literacy. Um, Another opportunity for us is to connect more strongly with campus partners uh, to help promote and inform the types of programs that we're doing. Uh, we have a relatively newly formed Institute for the Study of Global Racial Justice at Rutgers. That's one, one definite, definite potential partner there. Uh, we want to continue and develop this program. Uh, so um, there will be probably future updates. Uh, so um, a moment about data literacy, right? So I, I've alluded to this in the intro. 
Um, data literacy is not only just neutral objective concepts. Um, as I was composing these slides, you know, there's this big series that just came out in the New York Times called The Ransom, which is about um, the historical development of Haiti and quantifying the actually really surprisingly massive numbers involved in debt repayment that was um, insisted upon by France after the Haitian Revolution that is interwoven with, you know, the story of Haiti and its development or under underdevelopment. So when we talk about uh, data sources, we also have to introduce awareness of these types of issues, right? That, uh, that the debt flow from Haiti had not been uh, properly counted or highlighted uh, for a long, long, long time, <laughs> uh, basically. Um, and pointing at a, at a single, uh, single standard source for some things is maybe not uh, the only thing that people should be thinking about. Uh, when we talk about machine learning and AI, we have to talk about algorithmic bias because it's kind of, otherwise it really will be baked in inextricably in a way we can't get it out. Um, and all of the sort of basic concepts that uh, we kind of accept, particularly in an American context of race, education, income, ethnicity, um, all of them are contested categories that change over time, have different implications. Um, and I think some recognition of that complexity is it would be a good thing as well. Uh, so I believe that providing more options, more data sources, more ways to deal with these issues is the best way forward so that people can be aware, make informed choices, um, and having the resources out there helps us integrate that into all of our data education efforts. Um, so again, we can't discuss in a one directional recording, but I am curious about others' experiences and how you are able to address these challenges. How do you integrate diversity topics into your data literacy work? How can we broaden the audience for this kind of thing? Um, particularly in the academic context, trying to reach busy undergraduates and graduate students. Um, my talk is from a U.S. perspective. Uh, we have a particular history in that regard. Um, I am very curious about what other um, parts of the world think of as the, the major issues here. Um, as I said, the, the categories that are used race, ethnicity, different kinds of background, gender are have different impacts and different ways of seeing around the world. Um, and how can we bring more voices in to this this discussion um, from our uh, sort of insulated vantage point, sometimes insulated, sometimes we have the freedom to go out and engage uh, in different places, but um, our, our point of view as data workers. So with that, leave you with those questions to think about. Uh, you can contact me, you can leave comments. Um, I, I'm happy to discuss further, and I just want to thank you for your attention. Um, this is the best hybrid IASIS ever. It is the first I, hi, hybrid IASIS, so it definitely meets that criteria we have for IASIS of um, always improving. Uh, so I say thank you, spasiba, merci, bayadla, and uh, until next time, thank you.